MRI can be used at various disease stages in patients with ankylosing spondylitis, according to Dr. Mikhail Ostergaard. At the annual European Congress of Rheumatology in London, Dr. Ostergaard explained how MRI can be used to identify disease in the spine, sacroiliac joints, and peripheral joints. Could you talk a little bit about the value of MRI for spondyloarthritis? Yes, the, uh, the advantage of MRI in spondyloarthritis is that it is the only modality is able to visualize uh, the inflammation in the diseased area, that means in the actual joints, sacroiliac joints, and in the spine. And that's uh, a new and very important thing because that means that we are able to diagnose the therapy, uh, diagnose the disease earlier uh, than we could before and it can also be used for uh, monitoring uh, treatment efficacy and it can also be used for prognostication. Um, at least there are some uh, interesting results concerning that that I'll come back to. With respect to diagnosis, uh, it's for a long time been a period that, uh, sorry, it has been a problem um, that um, you could not diagnose um, ankylosing spondylitis, which is the most common form of spondyloarthritis, at an early time point because it required x-ray changes, which are very late. So the diagnosis was delayed up to seven to ten years. And now there's been made some new classification criteria for actual spondyloarthritis, which are built upon MRI plus clinical features. And this means that you can make the diagnosis a lot earlier um, within, for instance, a less than a year of uh, the first symptoms. And that is now part of the way that you should diagnose and handle your patients with spondyloarthritis. So MRI is now crucial. It can visualize inflammation and thereby uh, contribute significantly to the diagnosis of uh, spondyloarthritis. Um, and we should do that uh, in clinical practice uh, with all the patients where that have inflammatory back pain and where we sus uh, have suspicion of being spondyloarthritis. Uh, what are some of the practical considerations as far as clinicians using and uh, and reading this information? Well, um, in reality, it shouldn't be that large, but MRI is not that cheap um, and therefore somebody would say we don't have can afford to do that um, so what you should remember that the treatments we are giving are a lot more expensive so we should be able to do that so that's uh, and, and I think that the majority of um, departments actually accept that this is important the second thing is of course that we need uh, sufficient uh, quality of the reads of the MRIs and in a lot of places the radiologists who are doing the reads um, are very skilled and do this and are good at it but there's also a significant amount of places where the radiologists have not been trained in this and are not uh, so familiar with the actual importance of the correct description of the MRI images. So there's also a, a challenge in educating uh, radiologists on a broader level so that they can do the optimal, uh, the optimal reads. For Global Medical News Network, I'm Heidi Spleet.